Page flipping. You guys, pages flipping. Huh. Okay. All right. Ready? Go ahead. Good morning, church. Good to see y'all this morning. Y'all, please stand with us as we sing the Lion and the Lamb. Coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, as broken hearts declare His praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb will bow before Him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. A God who comes to save, is here to set the captives free But who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him And our God is the Lamb For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before Him stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before Him Amen, amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, Lord God, we come before Your holy throne, and we bow before You and we worship You. 
Oh, Father, let us not worship you just because there's words up on a screen. Father, let us worship you because of what you have done for us. Our, our, our God, our Creator, would send His only begotten Son to walk on this earth. And that Son willingly dying upon a cross and shedding His blood for my sin. Rescuing me from the pits of, of a devil's hell. So Father, we just bow before You and we worship You with thanksgiving and, and praise and honor unto the one and only true God. Father, I pray that today that all that we do and say brings glory and honor unto you, that, that this is a day that you are glorified. Let us sing these songs of worship and praise collectively, Father, as a, as, uh, as a word of testimony of who you are in our lives. And Father, that whenever we leave this place, that we are changed because we've been touched by a holy God. And we ask this name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. You may be seated. And all the time. Amen. 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 Hey, a few announcements this morning. Uh, first off, how many shoe boxes are we sending out? 1,200 shoe boxes. That's going to be a big task, church. Amen. We need everybody working uh, together to get uh, 1,200 shoe boxes uh, sent out. If you would like to join and work with the shoe box people, please come see me. I will get you in, in touch with people like Betty Wassman, uh, uh, who works on it regularly, Ruth, uh, Ruth Billingsley and Marge, and there's a group that, that collectively work on it all the time. Uh, and I will get you in touch with the right people. And you can work at your house. We have sewing that can be done right now and, and purchasing of items. And, and in fact, we've got a whole big old pile of uh, handkerchiefs. We've got to sew handkerchiefs. We've got to sew 1,200 handkerchiefs. So if, uh, if you like to sew or can sew, Miss Betty, wave your hand. See Miss Betty after church, uh, and she will set you up with some handkerchiefs that you can help sew to send out to children uh, around the world. All right, something else. Today we are going to start Children's Church back. That's good. Amen? So Children's Church, if we have any children that would like to go to Children's Church, you are now free to go. Uh, anybody that's uh, four years old to fourth grade is eligible to go if you would like to. Miss Marge is over there waiting. Uh, if no one does, that's fine. You like, you like hearing me preach? That's okay, too. No, Frank, you got to sit down. Uh, but we are going to get it started uh, back. We, we believe it's time for us to, to start our children's church. So if anybody would like to attend children's church, uh, you, you can be dismissed now. Hey, don't forget about our Wednesday night Bible study and Awanas. Both of them have started back at 630. And so the children uh, that uh, can attend Awanas, we would encourage you to come. Uh, as well as our Wednesday night Bible study. I love our Wednesday night Bible study. If you're not coming, I encourage you to come. All right, if you're a guest with us, in the chair pocket in front of you is a card that looks something like this. Please fill that out and drop it in the offering plate when you, ret when you leave, as we would just like to have a record of your attendance. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Seth uh, as we continue our worship. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hair of salvation, purchase of God. Of his spirit washed in his blood, perfect submission, and always at rest. I am my savior, am happy and blessed, watching and waiting. With his goodness Lost in his love 
This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior All the day long This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior All the day long And oh, what a Savior Wonderful Jesus Oh, what a Savior Wonderful Jesus Death could not hold you You are victorious Grace to the risen King And oh, what a Savior Wonderful Jesus Oh, what a Savior Wonderful Jesus Oh, what a Savior Wonderful Jesus Oh, what a Savior This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long Y'all please stand with us. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name You're rich in love And you're slow to anger Your name is great And your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find So bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name And on that day When my strength is failing 
The end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forever says nothing the king of all kings came to serve washing my feet and covering me with your love if more of you means less of me take everything yes all of you is all I need Take everything You are my life and my treasure The one that I can't live without here at your feet my desires and dreams I lay down And oh, here at your feet my desires and dreams I lay down If more of you means less of me Take everything Yes, all of you is all I need Take everything If more of you Means less of me Take everything Yes, all of you Is all I need Take everything Oh Lord Change me like only you can hear with my heart in your hands Father I pray make me more like Jesus this world is dying to know who you are you've shown us the way to your heart so Father I pray make me more like Jesus more Like Jesus more Like Jesus Lord And if more of you means less of me Take everything Yes, all of you is all I need Take everything If more of you Means less of me Take everything Yes, all of you Is all I need Take everything 
help us take a moment to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you as Josh gives us the word this morning. God is good, and all the time, amen. I uh, was making that announcement about Children's Church, and I kind of messed up a little bit. We want Children's Church to start, uh, actually, we've been getting pretty crowded in our, uh, our service, and it's a way to help you know, free up some chairs to let children go in there. Now, I like children being in our service, but uh, it's a way for us to uh, open up some chairs uh, as the last few Sundays, it's been pretty tight in here, but that's a good problem to have. Amen? Amen. It really, really is. Uh, and you know, God has been so, so good to us. Um, so Children's Church, I actually want it starting right after Sunday school. Uh, so what we'd like is our, our children right after Sunday school to go into our, our Children's Church area. Uh, and that's really for children that are four years old to fourth grade. I think fifth and sixth graders need to be out here uh, sitting with uh, their parents, hearing the word be preached. Uh, and now, the, if you're back there, they're going to teach the word as well. Uh, but I think fifth and sixth graders can be out here uh, with us. Y'all agree with that? Amen? If you don't, talk to me later. Don't say anything right now. It'd be pretty awkward if you did. <laughs> um, Hey, we are, we're going to continue our study in the book of Matthew. Uh, last week, we looked at this really, really important text, this, this picture of Jesus coming out and starting on this walk to Jerusalem, uh, that something had changed on him, and to the point that it really frightened his disciples. Uh, and he called his apostles over to the side, and he, and he talks to them, and and tells them, hey, we're going to Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem I'm going to be betrayed and to the chief priest, and, and, and I'm, they're, going to, they're going to sentence me to death. I'm going to be turned over to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles, they're going to mock me, they're going to scourge me, they're going to crucify me. But then he said these words, in three days I will rise again. Amen. Hallelujah, amen? In three days I will rise again. And so Jesus just makes this amazing declaration uh, to us. To me, it's another example of Jesus willingly going to the cross. That picture I painted last week of him looking at Jerusalem said, All right, game on, let's go. This is what I came for. Uh, that his mind was set and he aggressively went uh, to accomplish the purpose that he, had come, uh, that he had always come for. Now we're going to pick up the story right where it left off. It certainly doesn't seem like this fits. Uh, and, and it's a, again an example of how I'm not sure the apostles fully grasped what was going on. Uh, and we'll see this in our text today. Right after Jesus makes this declaration to him, the next thing that happens. And so we're going to read Matthew chapter 20 verses 20 through 28. So out of reverence for God's word, will you please rise as we read Matthew chapter 20. Verses 20 through 28. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? And she said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit on your right hand and the other on your left hand in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you are asked. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism I'm about to be baptized with? And they said to him, yes, we are. Verse 23, and he said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptized I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand or on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it was prepared by my father. And then the ten heard it, and they were greatly displeased with the brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, 
you know that the rulers and the Gentiles lord over them, that those who are great, those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. Whoever de- desires to be great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. And just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Father, Lord God, the time has come for the preaching of your word. And I, Father, I pray that, Father, that today that your Holy Spirit would control my heart, my mind, and my tongue. Father, let, let not this message be preached of me, but let, let it be of you. That, Father, that you are glorified, that you are honored. That, Father, that, that I am completely and totally yielded unto you to deliver the message that this group of people needs to hear on this day. Father, I pray that the same Holy Spirit moves in this place and it, it touches people's lives. Father, as we will look at different topics today, that, that you would use those topics to touch people's lives in different ways that would draw them closer unto you. But Father, I do pray if there's anyone here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, may today be the day of their salvation, Father. That you would be glorified and honored in all that we do. We ask this in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but sometimes I am so glad that the, the apostles were just so normal. You know? They were just these normal people. They, they would mess up and, and get things wrong the same way that I would. And I, I think it makes it certainly easy for me to, to look at them and their families and, and just see how normal they were. Because you see right here... Um, there was a mom that really wanted her two boys to have a special spot. She wanted the best for their kids. Amen? Isn't that normal? Doesn't a mom want the best for their kids? And so you got this mom that uh, really is just wanting to, to have her boys in special, special recognition or in special places. And uh, by the way, we're talking about James and John. These are the two apostles that, we're, that they're talking about. Uh, she was the mother of James and John. And um, but she wanted her kids to, to have this special place. And by the way, if you go read this account over in Mark, you'll see that James and John were really, they were pretty actively involved in this. It wasn't that just a mother came up and said, hey, I'm going to go talk to Jesus about y'all having these spots. James and John uh, really might have even coerced their mom into helping along the way. And, and they kind of, it almost seems like they came up with this plan. Uh, James and John wanted those positions, but they thought it was best if mama went and asked rather than them asked for themselves. So they kind of get mama involved to go. Doesn't that just sound normal? Amen? I mean, when you really need something, don't you go to mom? Amen? Anyway, I just think that that was so normal um, that, that they had acted that way. But yet they had completely missed what Jesus had just said. Jesus had just said to them, I'm going to Jerusalem, and I'm going to be beaten, I'm going to be mocked, I'm going to be uh, spit upon. He didn't use the word spit this time, but he's he's describing to them what's going to happen. He's going to be crucified, and he's going to raise again. You would think the next part of the conversation would be about what Jesus just talked about, amen? But it wasn't. The next thing comes up is, well, hey, I want something special. I'll tell you something, just a side note, a side note to this text. It is very probable, if not um, expected, to think that there was another mother that had just heard this whole exchange. What other mother might have just heard this whole exchange? Mary. Mary was probably right there at this whole time and just heard her son make this declaration. I'm headed to Jerusalem, and I'm going up there, and I'm going to be crucified, uh, but on the third day I'm going to rise again. And then all of a sudden, they were related, this, this Zebedee's wife comes in and says, hey, can my, can my two boys be uh, on the right and left? I wonder if Mary was like, did you just hear what my son just said? Did, did, did you not hear a word that he just said? My, my son just talked about how he was going to die. And as I read this, I couldn't help but think, I wonder what Mary thought. Because we get to see what the rest of the disciples thought about it. But I just wonder what Mary had to think about the way that she stepped in and wanted something special for her kids whenever her son had just said he was going to go die. I don't know. 
Now, don't forget what, what Jesus had just told them back in Matthew chapter 19. Flip back to chapter 19, verse number 28. Whenever Jesus had said, Assuredly, I say to you in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on his throne in glory, you who have followed me will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So it, that, that what Jesus had said back here might have led to this conversation that now all of a sudden James and John are so concerned about where they're going to sit. They didn't, they, it wasn't good enough that they just got a throne to sit on. They wanted something more. In fact, they wanted to be right next to the one who was really in charge. Back during those times uh, that if you had a leader, let's say the Sanhedrin uh, council, if the, whoever was in charge... The next two in command, one would sit on the left and one would sit on the right. And if the leader was ever out, they got to step in and call the shots. And so what they're really saying is, hey, we want everybody to know that my two boys are next in line to the throne. Pretty arrogant to be asking, isn't it? For them to be having that mentality. You see that they had... They had taken this conversation about these, these thrones and, and this judging that was going on, and they still had it in the physical world and did not grasp what Jesus was really saying to them. Uh, today we're going to dive into multiple different topics, and, and I'm, going to, I'm going to talk about several different topics inside this text. So, so I just pray that one of these topics will, will speak to you today. But there's some things that happen inside here, and so this is just going to be kind of multiple different topics. There's no great outline I can do on it. There's just some topics that we're going to hit inside this text. And so the first thing I want you to notice uh, is that what happens here at the very start. Look at what happens in verse number 20. Then the mother uh, of Zebedee's sons, James and John, the mother of James and John's came to him uh, with her sons kneeling down. Now, now they came and they kneeled down before him. By the way, the kneeling down is a form of worship. And so they came and they kneeled down as if they are going to worship Jesus Christ. But yet whenever they came and in this act of worship, and that's exactly what it was, was an act of worship, they come in this mode but not for worship. They came because they had a a secret or special ambition that they wanted. There was something else that was going on inside their life that they really wanted to talk about. In fact, I would almost say that as they came and they knelt down, that they were doing it as a selfish act for their own benefit, trying to get Jesus' attention. That they thought that if I come and do this, that he's really going to pay attention to what I have to say made me wonder about our worship. It made me wonder about the way that we worship the Lord. I, w- I wonder if, if sometimes we come with the same reasoning or the same mindset. We'll go through the right motions and we will say the words that are up on the screen. And we will put on these happy plastic faces and act like everything's all right. And we will come and go through the motions of worship, but our hearts are far away from worship. Our minds aren't anywhere where they need to be. Our heart isn't in a, in a mode or a, or a thought of worship. We've got something else on our mind or in our heart that is far from worship of God. And I wonder if sometimes whenever we come in here to, to, to go through our act of worship, if we're just going through the motions, thinking that if I do this, if I go through this, then Jesus is really going to pay attention to what I have. If I go through these motions, then he's really going to pay attention to me. Folks, that's, that's not the way worship happens. Folks, I will, I will tell you, going through the motions uh, of worship is, is something that, I'm, I'm just going to be honest, I've done it myself where, where you just go through the motions and you're just saying the words and you're singing the songs, but your heart is far away from the Lord. There's different reasons why your heart might be far away from the Lord. It might be all the stuff that's going on inside this world. You might have sin inside your life. Uh, you might have apathy that's going on. You might be being selfish with your own time and energy. Uh, or you're just, you just mentally are not really in a heart of worship. And all of a sudden you come and you go through the, the motions and, and you get up and you're like, all right, and you check it off the box. Yep, I've done it. And you leave. Folks, that's not the way we worship God. Scripture says that 
that, that God is looking for true worshipers to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Folks, I will tell you, I don't want God to have to look any further than me. He is worthy of our worship, right? Hey, do me a favor. If you've ever been in that mode where, where you just don't feel like your worship is right, you just feel like something is wrong, do me a favor. I shared this uh, uh, Wednesday night in our Bible study, but I'm going to share you the text with you today. Flip uh, to Psalms chapter 51. Flip over to Psalms chapter 51 for me. If you ever get to the point where your worship is not true worship, you're just going through the motions, your heart is not right with the Lord, and you know that something is wrong, do me a favor. Look at what is said in Psalms chapter 51. Look at verse number 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In fact, you got you to start with saying, God, I want you to create this heart of worship. Don't, don't create it yourself. Have him create it with inside you. Then jump down to verse number 12. Look at verse number 12. It says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold, and uphold me by your generous spirit. F- folks, if you ever get to the point where you are uh, uh, not worshiping God the way that you should or maybe the way that you once did, go back to your salvation. And say, Re- renew the joy of my salvation. Folks, if you will go back to the point that you were saved, you worship God very special at that time when you can say, I still remember this day, even though it was over 40 years ago, I remember my salvation literally like it was yesterday. There was something special about that moment. And if I ever get to the point where I'm not worshiping God right, I go back and start thanking him for what he has done. He saved my soul from an eternity in hell. Folks, he is worthy of worship and praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. Because he saved my soul, he sent his son to die on the cross and he is worthy of our worship. I don't have to look further than my own salvation to say, I worship you, I praise you, Jesus, because you are Lord. Amen? Amen. God is so good. Folks, if you ever get to the point where your worship is just going through the motions, don't, don't stay there. Praise Him. He is looking for people to worship Him. He is looking. Let Him look no further than you. Flip back to our text. Look at, look at the, the request that has been made. They come in this act of worship, kneeling down. Look at verse number 21. He says, what do you wish? She said, Grant that my two sons may sit on your right hand or on your left in your kingdom. I will tell you, they were still thinking about the physical world and a physical kingdom. And they wanted one on the left and the right. The way that it was really set up with the, with the Jewish lead, leaders about who was going to be in charge. But whenever I read this text and I started preparing for this message, there are two words that I underlined inside my text that just grabbed hold of my heart. And it was these words, your kingdom. Look at those two words, your kingdom. Folks, whenever I started thinking about your kingdom, those words right there, I started thinking about heaven. Folks, I started thinking about heaven. As I was preparing and thinking about this message, folks, I started thinking about heaven. I don't know about y'all, but is anybody else ready to get to heaven? Amen? I am telling you, whenever I look around at this world and all the, all the stuff that is going on, all the pressures of this world, Whenever I start seeing all the pain that is going on and all the suffering that happens. Folks, whenever I start seeing what sin is causing inside this world, whether it's in corruption, it's really about what humanity does when humanity uh, yields itself to sin. You see it around this world. And as I started thinking, folks, I can't wait to get home because I am just a pilgrim just passing through. I only get so much time here on earth and then I get to go be with God in glory and I start thinking about his kingdom and it started making me think about heaven and I don't know about you but I said I can't wait to finally get home amen 
Man, and then, and then this week, I was preparing this message, and we put out daily videos as we're studying through Scripture as a church, and I just happened to be selected to, to read Revelation chapter 4, so flip over to Revelation chapter 4 with me, if you will, and flip over to what, what was called on, on me to start leading through, and I'm studying about heaven and what heaven is, and, and then I got to Revelation chapter 4, and look. What it says, verses 2 through 5, John is writing here. He says, immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, the throne set in heaven, and one who sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like jasper and a sardis stone, his appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, the appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 Thrones, and on those thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. <clears throat> and from the throne preceding lightnings and thunders and voices, and seven lamps and, and fire were blazing before the throne, in which the seven spirits of God. Verse number six, before the throne there was the sea of glass like crystal. Oh, folks, I started reading about this. Jump down to verse number 8. For the four living creatures, each, each having six wings, were full of eyes and within, uh, around and within. And they did not rest night and day, singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Down to verse number 10. The 24 elders fell down before Him who sits on the throne, and they worshipped Him who's who lives forever and ever, and they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and are created. Oh, folks, I started thinking about heaven and how I can't wait to finally get to see this place that is so eloquently described in the book of Revelation that it even talks about us walking on streets of gold. And, and I, I got to thinking, I can't wait to be in a place that is separated from sin when we don't have these burdens of the world. Everything from paying taxes to having to get up and go to work. I don't know about you, but I can't wait until I get up out of bed and I don't ache. Amen. I am looking forward to that day. Whenever I don't have to stretch before I get out of bed because it hurts. Amen? I got to thinking about heaven. And then, and then I flipped over to Revelation chapter 21. Flip over to Revelation chapter 21. Verse number 1. And now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there were no more sea. Then I, John, saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and heard loud voices of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he dwelled with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Verse number four, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain for their former things have passed away. Verse number five, and he sat on his throne and said, behold, I make all things new. I don't know about you, but I am looking forward to a day when we do away with all this that's going on and we get to bow before and worship the Lord God on high. Amen? Amen. Oh, folks, as I started thinking about and dwelling on heaven, it, it forced me to think of Isaiah chapter 62. Anybody ever think of Isaiah chapter 62, verse number 4 maybe? Anybody know that? Hey, maybe, maybe this will help you. Some, some words here might help you. It says this. I am kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will be spoken for time won't matter anymore. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Beulah Land. Y'all know that song? Put those words up on the screen. Y'all know that song, Beulah Land? 
Would y'all sing that with me? Just the chorus. Can y'all sing this with me? Beulah land, I'm longing for you. And someday on thee I'll stand. There my home shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. Folks, I don't know about you, but someday I'm looking forward to getting to heaven. Amen. There's going to be a glorious day. A glorious day. Whenever we get to walk on the streets of gold. But can I tell you something? I can't wait to see my Savior. The one that died for me. He has blessed me so much here on this earth. And someday I get to see him face to face. And I don't know about you, but I'm a hugger. And there's some people that might fall flat on their face, and I might. But I truly just want to throw my arms around him and say thank you. I'm looking forward to getting home someday. Can I tell you something? If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to tell you, you don't want to miss that day. Amen? Amen. And if you are saved, you need to take everybody you can with you. It's going to be amazing. Amen? Amen. I can't wait. Anyway, let's get back to the text. I, I kind of got off on a topic there. So let's, let's go back to our text. I got to finish preaching. <clears throat> Amen. Someday we will get to heaven, but let's go back to our text. See, whenever I read those words there in verse number 21 where, where, where she mentions his kingdom, it made me think of heaven. But let's go ahead and look at what else happened here. Jesus is asked the question in verse number 22. And he says to him, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism I'm about to be baptized with? Now, now, Jesus was talking about what he had just said, about going to the cross, about being mocked, about being beaten, about being scorched. He's talking about all that. They still don't even catch that. So they say, yeah, uh, we're able to do that. And Jesus is like, all right, I'll go, I'll go along with you. That's fine. You want to you wanna go down that road? But he makes a statement to them. He says, you will indeed drink of my cup. Now, There's a couple of ways that could be looked at. You will indeed take on the salvation that I'm going to provide for you. But there's another way to see it. Both of these people, folks, they were treated very roughly. In fact, James actually was killed uh, by the sword. In fact, you can go read that account over in Acts chapter 12 where, where James is killed by the sword. Why? Because he was a follower of Jesus Christ. And so because of that, yes, he did suffer and he did die because that John, John, they tried to kill John and finally just put him out on an island, the island of Patmos, and just stuck him all out there by himself. But he went through horrible and tragic times. So yeah, did he drink of that cup? Yeah, you could say that. But they still didn't grasp exactly what was going on. You see, he, he had asked them that question. And, and, and they had asked it that question. And Jesus says, hey, God has already prepared who's going to be on my right and on my left. And by the way, we know who he's going to be on his left hand, right? I shouldn't have said right. That's to me, lefts and rights. We know who's going to be on Jesus' left side, correct? Who's going to be on his left side? God the Father. Why? Because it says that Christ is on the right hand of God the Father. So if Christ is on the right hand of God the Father, that means who's on the left, left hand of Christ? God the Father. That one can't be given away, amen? And so... When Jesus said they didn't know what they were asking, they really didn't know what they were asking. But this question drove jealousy to come up with the other apostles. Jealousy becomes to, uh, on them. Can I tell you something? That happens inside churches today. People will be about the work of the kingdom of God and all of a sudden jealousies and and pride will come into church and we can't allow that to happen. Folks, we are working together for the kingdom of God. Amen? 
There should never be any t- uh, territories or battles that take place. And I will tell you, I believe that even for different denominations that we disagree with uh, on some doctrinal stuff, I believe if they are preaching the truth of salvation, then let them preach the truth of salvation that people are saved. And let's not get all caught up on who's doing what and where things are going. Folks, it's all for the glory of the kingdom of God and not about us. And so guess what? If the church of Christ are saving people, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the Pentecostal are, hallelujah. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to get too concerned about the other stuff. I want people to go to heaven. Why? Because I've read what, how beautiful it is, and I also know how bad hell is. Amen? These, they, they got jealous. Folks, let's, let's not get jealous. But Jesus also painted a picture to them. Look at what Jesus says in verse number 25. And Jesus said to them, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord over them. And those that are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. And Jesus makes it really clear that we are here to serve other people. Y'all hear me? Jesus made it very clear. We are here to serve other people. Amen? In fact, I want to show you some scriptures here. Flip over to James chapter 1. Anybody who's been in our church very long knows one of my favorite passages, James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse number 27. Why is this so special to me? Because we have in our, in our uh, accounts and what we give to, we have a, a missionary fund that we call 127. It's James 127 based off this scripture right here. Look at what it says in James 127. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the orphans and the widows in their trouble. Folks, we are called to serve other people. This says that our religion, pure and undefiled, it, folks, it has nothing to do with you showing up to church, even though I'm very glad you do, amen? It has nothing to do with some of the other stuff that, that we try to accomplish. What it is, is about us serving other people. Christ says here in the text that we're looking at in Matthew that he came to serve, not to be served, taking care of widows and orphans. Look at another text. Flip over to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, we'll start reading there. Then the Son of Man comes in His glory, and His holy angels are with Him, and He will sit on His throne in His holy glory. In verse number 32, it says this, The nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate from one another. The, sh- the shepherd divides His sheep from His goats. So you got two groups of people, sheep and goats. Verse 33, And He will say to His sheep on His right hand, but the goats on His left, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, in other words, to the sheep, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared before you before the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Folks, let me tell you something. At the end of the day, God is going to call us all together. And those that exercise the, the, first off, salvation makes you a sheep. So you're inherited into the, you are adopted into the family of God. But once you are adopted into the family of God, then we must be about his work. He just described what his work looked like. Feeding people that are hungry. Amen? Clothing people that don't have clothes. Visiting people who are sick and comforting, comforting them. Scripture says that people should be able to tell that you are a child of God by the way that you love people. Folks, you love people by showing them. Love is an action. Listen to me. Love is an action. 
Amen? An action. I can say I love you all day. It's better when I show you I love you. Amen? Love is an action. Just this week, I it was again, I was preparing for this text and I received a, a, a text from, from Justin. And Justin sent me this text and he said, Hey, Josh, I was studying with, with some people in a, uh, and they were younger youth in our, in our church, and they said, we would really like to get a closer connection inside the church. Is there any, is there any way that we can serve, serve people inside the church? Is, is, there any, is there any elderly people that need us to go grocery shop for them? Any, any, he didn't say all of these words. He did talk about grocery shopping, but is there any gutters that need to be cleaned out? Our youth were saying, we want to be plugged in closer to people inside our church and how were they going to do it by serving amen I loved it that's exactly what we were just talking that we were going to talk about today and he says how can we do that and then I got to thinking about the best time that I've ever seen growth as a as a Sunday school teacher do you know that the in all my years of teaching Sunday school um, our, our our Sunday school class actually grew better and, and had a better fellowship at times when we were serving other people as a class. It wasn't whenever we were having our fellowships. It was whenever we had something that we were serving. In fact, I'll, I'll take you back. We, our, our Sunday school class was, I don't even remember how, how many people were attending. You, I don't know. There's 15, 20 people, and, and we had a couple that um, she, she got pregnant, and she was bedridden and was going to be uh, bedridden for like, I don't know, four months maybe. It was a long time. And so our Sunday school class built a, built a sheet, and every night we took them food, and somebody took them food. Folks, whenever we started doing that, we went from like 15 in our Sunday school, and it went to 20, and then like 30, and 40, all of a sudden, because I don't, there, there, I, I'm not saying it was because we were working, but there was certainly a connection between what was going on in our Sunday school class and the fact that we were serving somebody that was in need. I don't, God blessed it. But I will tell you what it did inside our Sunday school class also brought us together closer. And I got to thinking, folks, we, Sunday school classes need to be doing stuff like that. Amen. People need to be doing stuff like that. And then I, I had, a, had a conversation with Shoe Bob uh, this week, Brother Bob, I, Brother Bob Myers. I'll call him Brother Bob Myers now. But, and, he, and he started talking to me about an idea, and I thought, what a great idea it is. And In fact, I, he talked about our, our shoebox ministry. Don't y'all love our shoebox ministry? Yeah, reaching out 1,200 people, kids we're going to send shoebox to. And then the thought was this, Josh, why don't we do something even bigger and better with our shoeboxes? Still do shoeboxes, but bigger and better. And I'm like, what do you mean we we'll do bigger and better? He's like, I'm not talking about doing more. It's not about doing more. Let's just take that same concept and change it uh, into a different type of ministry. Keep doing our 1,200, but let's, let's add to it because that's such a good ministry. Let's add to that ministry. He said, Josh, why don't, why don't we have uh, shoeboxes that we collect, and, and in those shoe boxes, it's just the people that are going to the laundromat. And so we put a bunch of stuff that somebody would need that's at a laundromat. And then once a quarter, we would come up here and we would take those shoe boxes and we'd go to all the laundromats and we would just take these shoe boxes to people that are that are at the laundromat. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Yeah, amen. Well, Joshua, why don't we why don't we think about uh, mothers that have just had babies and 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 let's put a bunch of stuff in there for mothers that just have babies and let's go to the hospitals maybe and give it to to mothers that just had babies. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Yeah, that would be a great idea. How about those people that stand on the corners? Y'all notice in Northwest Arkansas, we have a lot of people just standing in corners. Why don't we just build some shoe boxes for people that are standing out on the corners and let's put some stuff in those and let's go to these corners and let's give them to those people that are standing out there in the corners. Shouldn't we do something like that? I'm like, yeah, we should do something like that. Why can't we take our shoe box ministry and start ministering the same way here in Northwest Arkansas? I was like, that's a great idea. Amen. Think about this, if once a quarter, we as a church all came and we met and we had all these shoeboxes. Hey, this group, y'all are going to the laundry mats. 
This group, you ought to go into hospitals. Hey, we've got some, we got some widows uh, that we've collected shoeboxes for. And here's shoeboxes for widows. And so this group, you ought to go and go take care of these widows. And, and we just divided up the church. And we all went out once a quarter with our shoeboxes and delivered them to people. Amen? Isn't that a great idea? I say, let's do it. Do we need a business meeting to vote on that? No. I didn't, I, didn't even, I didn't even talk to the elders or the deacons about this. But let's just do it, amen? Let's start serving other people. I think that's a great way for us to do it. I will tell you, I think, I think that the fellowship and the fun that would take place would be such a big benefit to this church. And so we're going to start putting together plans. And if you, want to, hey, if you want to work on it, if you want to help out, come see me. Let me know. Because it's going to take a lot of coordination. The shoeboxes that we do right now, it takes a lot of coordination. And to pull this off, I'm going to need some people to step up and say, all right, I'm tired of just sitting there every Sunday morning. Give me a task to do. And I'll say, all right, this is your task. And I'll start giving you tasks. Amen? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right, good. Now, let's go back to our text. Look at what Jesus says here. Look at what Jesus says in verse number 28. He says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and gave himself as a ransom. What an amazing display of love. What an amazing display of love and an amazing act of service that he did when he went to the cross. Do me a favor, flip, a favor, flip over to Romans chapter 5. A verse you need to have highlighted and underlined inside your scripture. Romans chapter 5. Verse number 8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You notice what it says right there? That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Where should our service be? Maybe to people that aren't just inside this building. Amen. Maybe the service needs to be more out there in the public with the people who are yet still sinners. Amen. Let's serve them. Maybe maybe it's a single mother or father. But Jesus says his act of service, his act of love was to give his life. What does he ask in return? That we would give our life back to him. We would give our life back to him. Folks, that's what we talk about with salvation. If you've never been saved, you don't know what it would be like to know that you know that you know that if you died, you'd go to heaven. I would ask that you would come and talk to me. See, we're going to have a time of invitation and and God would be inviting you to come and say that you want to be saved. I want to share that experience with you. Please come and talk to me about salvation but maybe you're here today and you say that your act of worship hasn't been what it needed to be you need to come back to the joy of your salvation or maybe you say that you've not been serving God the way that you need to maybe you want to come to the altar and pray the altar will be open for you to move however God has led you if you will please rise and I'll lead us in a word of prayer Father Lord God I ask that you would have your way during this time of invitation may you be glorified I ask this in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Move however God has led you as we sing. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. 
speak a word is true Cause I am found I am yours I am loved I may be pure I have a life I can breathe I am healed I am free Here's my heart, oh Lord. Here's my heart, oh Lord. Here's my heart, oh Lord. Speak a word is true. Cause you are strong, you are sure. You are alive, you endure, you are good, always true, you are alive, breaking through, here's my heart, Lord, here's my heart. my heart Lord speak a word is true amen 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 God is good let's serve people amen Amen. Hey, one special prayer request that I just uh, wanted to call out. Uh, Janie's here, but uh, James, her husband, is in the hospital. He had a heart attack yesterday, and he's in ICU right now. Uh, and so if you'll just, but he's got a little bit better, uh, is what I've heard. But be praying for uh, James uh, and Janie, Janie, if you will, okay? All right, let's join hands with your family members, and let's sing <laughs> family. <coughs> let's sing family of God as we're dismissed. And I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God.